so today I think we're going to do a little bit of unboxing because I fell behind while doing the uh, communications video and we already have some out and I have Ken and Eric as supposed to ooh and ah at what we are going to find but Ken you already found something here we already two things and first is this thing and this was actually a gift from uh, Spaceaholic, which you no, know, I think um, Steve has half the collection of Apollo stuff, then Spaceaholic has the second half. And Marcel's trying to get the third half or something like that. And I, I made a little pulsar. He also has a Soyuz clock. And I made him a, I made him a little pulsar for the, for the Soyuz clock. And he did, I had two, two requests for that. And so I sent it to him. And he said, oh, do you want any money for it? He said, nah. Forget it. So instead, he, he gave me much better. He sent me... A, a, what we what he thought was an LVDC page, um, but Ken has found what it is in two nanoseconds. So what is it, Ken? So it's a capacitor decoupling board from the LVDA, the Launch Vehicle Data Adapter. All right. So it's the and the other board you reverse engineer, engineer the friend board was also LVDA and not LVDC, right? Right. To step back, the LVDC and the LVDA were the systems that controlled the Saturn V rocket. So a different computer from the Apollo Guidance computer. Um, the LVDC was built by IBM using their own technology. And then the LVDA was the data adapter that basically analog to digital converters and so forth to feed data into the LVDC. And they were both sort of big, big metal boxes full of, of these circuit boards. Uh -huh. And so you can see there's a bunch of surface mount capacitors on the board, um, both sides of the board. So the leaded ones from the documentation, they appear to be packages with four capacitors, and then all four are connected together in parallel. Oh, okay. So here is a combo of two. So you say the red ones are one capacitor and, uh, and the transparent ones are four caps together? Yeah. So, so, signal return is what they call ground. Mm -hmm. So they have two capacitors in series connected to ground and then to one of the voltage lines. And then they have test points in between the two capacitors, I guess, to check for shorted capacitors. So the test points are up here on the top of the board. Mm -hmm. And so that allowed them to check if there were shorts in the capacitors. Wow. And then over here you can see the, the four capacitor modules with the uh -huh. pins all shorted together. So that seems to be what the wires are doing. So, so the, this is what the data adapter looked like in exploded view. So, so th this is a sort of a top view showing all the slots for the boards. Mm -hmm. And um, here you can see decap caps and decap caps. And you just whole bunch them together. So, so this, this board would have been in one of those two positions. Very good. Okay, so next uh, we have connectors. You, you, f you managed to find a, a connector on eBay. It wasn't quite exactly what we wanted. Oh wait, I'm just realizing that those of you who are not subscribed to Patreon have not seen yet what we are talking about. This is for this completely undocumented box here, which we figured out is a box that sends ground commands to the Apollo spacecraft. It has this great edge lit displays. Inside it is full of mystery cars with mystery modules. They look like relays, but they are actually analog and logic circuits made with discrete components. If you follow on Patreon, you know that we are already pretty far along with this one. Aha! Uh -huh. I think we just read our tape. Master Ken had been reverse engineering the mysterious boards little by little but he needs a test connector to complete his study, which we had a real hard time to find. Yeah, the connector on eBay exactly matched the connector we wanted, except it was longer, and then it had two metal pins for guiding it in. Uh, Mark carefully milled these connectors, so now they're you know, an exact match for the, the ones I want. There must be something special about the green color, because I have that. And I got, so I unboxed it already, and this one I found while we were looking for connector for the uh, communications equipment 
this is the connector for my iRig gyroscope and turns out Mouser had it with you know, whatever 20 weeks lead time and and what they have of course zero in stock it was I don't remember 40 bucks or something totally reasonable now they have 24 in stock <laughs> this is the 25th one so here's my iRig and it has a little protective hood on it there you go and yeah does fit that's the exact right part cool so we're one step closer to uh, powering up my uh iric which by the way um mike was able to find a, a paper trace of it he found a reference to this gyro and it's one of the last gyros made from the serial number and it had been tested in 1978 something as a working unit so it's oh, that's promising so that's very promising eric oh, that's for yeah. you that's for um i think that's the the the, the idm board right. idm museum all right Yes, oh yeah, just on the chip, the chip we want has some slight damage to it, but I think that's repairable. And so you remove already one chip, not, yeah, you can see. And he removed the um, BIOS, the SCSI BIOS, he wanted to dump it. So if this is a donor, can I have the, the square chip? You can certainly have the square chip. That is the DNA controller. Mm. And this is the, the one we're trying to replace and it's got some things but that should not be too difficult to unbend i don't think it's some tweezers or your little tungsten probe we can go in there and bend so it the next box is a surprise box this is a, a donation it was going to give me something else i was interested in i can't even remember what it is and say, oh by the way i give you a little bit more <laughs> So he gave me stuff. half of his lab. All right. Looks like a lot of ribbon cables. Well, those are useful for the uh, for the HP stuff. So yeah, I have to sort through that cables, connectors. Oh, it's the the guy from the National Radio Astronomy Observatory, Jim Mulberg. And they were going to throw it all, they were cleaning the lab. And uh, in Charlottesville, Virginia, is that the guy that had the biggest antenna? Yep, it sure is them. The 100 meter Green Bank radio antenna in uh, West Virginia. I see some green stuff in there. More green connectors. Green edge, yeah. Uh, and you know, if, if, I, if I can't use them, I just give them to access solutions. Right, then they, they'll put them in the shelves. Well, thank you, Jim. We'll, we'll, we'll go through it later. All right. Okay, this is going to take me a while to sift through. Forgot that's what this is. Oh, that's heavy. Yeah, well, that, that, that's when you get donations, right? They are, okay, can you? They are well packed. When you get eBay stuff, it's just people send you their trash can and send the package. Bare minimum. I think that's, I, I, I misspoke, this is eBay. Oh, you're taking a trip? This is eBay. Well, thank, you, thank you eBay vendor that packaged it quite well. That's unusual. Oh, -hoo. All right. and this is a silent. 703 so yeah, it, oh that might be of interest to you by the way that's that's a that's a tape drive oh yeah for um for old old computers right they whatever the what would use that the commodores uh, yeah a lot of computers oh, you want it eric uh sure why not it's yours and what i was gunning after was this uh, here we go. So this is a little, this is a cute terminal. It's it's um, 
you know that TI came was famous for it, uh, called it the silent and it's extremely silent. Yes, right. thermal? It's, it's thermal. It's quite slow. It's 300 bars, and I don't know if you can slow it down any further than this. But it's, it's, a, it's a really good, nice thermal with a permanent screen. I could um, hook it up to the uh, HP twenty twenty six forty five. And they should be able to talk at 300 bars. Maybe we hear how quiet it is. No, I don't think I've seen a return key that small before. And it's also the 703. There is 703 and 707, I think. The 707 has just the modem interface. It doesn't have a direct RS-232 port. So you want the 703. Well, I want the 703. Cool. Okay, so that's the other box from the... Uh, from this... Jim Mulberg at the National Radio Astronomy. That's the one I was interested in, I believe. Yeah, the Jim. Oh, okay. Get strong stuff, eh? <gasps> Hello! Recording charts, yes! Absolutely fantastic! With the ha 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 ha. <laughs> this is very useful to me because if you go over there I have the thing I restored it like I did it off off camera uh, but it works it works there you go and what else how do you there you go so this is the um, this is a, a paper chart recorder, and you need the special paper to go with it. It's HP, of course, and uh, it's fully functioned. Oh, oh, so you're going to have fun with that. Well, thank you, Jim. Well, that's light. Oh, oh, oh! Tube time! Come on, come on over. What do we have here? Come on over, tube time. Okay, tube time. You're the one that looks at the tube. It doesn't look like a tube inside. Oh, oh. I oh no, it's an H. It has HP. Oh, you know what this is? Okay, look okay. at this. You I see that? Do not know what it is. Sylvania is a new vistor. This was supposed to compete with a transistor, but it's a vacuum tube. You're kidding me. It's it's a vacuum tube. Is that this is a vacuum tube? Electrodes to it. It's they were made in the 1960s. Boop. Yeah, there. You can see the pins underneath. So the whole thing is made all at once. And it's a tr it's a tr equivalent to a triode. Yeah, uh, could be a triode. Uh, this yeah, one. Yeah, I just looked up. Oh, you looked up the number. Six is a triode. Okay. Yeah, they made pentodes and some others too. I think. Yeah, that Maybe might be six? for your chart recorder. Just. I have a new Vista in my chart recorder. You might. And I actually have the uh, manual for the 7132. If the manual is not online, I tend to try to get one and scan it. And I looked everywhere and I cannot find a new Vista anywhere, but I find a surprising number of uh, field effect transistors is surprising, right? This is very early and they're already using FET transistors. Very good HP, but no new Vistas. Uh, so here's another clue. There are other parts for the um, HP RMS voltmeter 3400A. Hi, uh, mystery solve found it's right here. So it's indeed in the uh, RMS voltmeter is this fellow and uh, I actually do have an RMS voltmeter but I have a later version and it's it's over here in the dark there we go it's the 400 400E this one had a fault and uh, so I I fixed it and I know it doesn't have a new Vista in it. It has a, it uses a JFET. So I guess the, what the, the new Vista just got displaced by JFET, right? Because when it happened, there was no, no reason to get, uh, there, there was a solid state equivalent of a high impedance uh, voltage device. 
Okay, sweet. So the 7586 was the first type of Nuvistor introduced in 1959. I imagine the, the tube guys just fighting to death to kill that awful transistor, right? Like the the, the, the guys that uh, were doing core memory, they just had advertisement of how bad the silicon memory is. I have a booklet from the, I think it's called the Tube Industry Association, uh -huh. and it's tubes versus transistors. Yeah. Now, of course, it comes out in favor of the tube. A comparative study right. to tell you which one is better. And so mm -hmm. here we have Ooh, a picture of the, the engineer comparing the two. And is deeply suspicious of the transistor. Very suspicious. And so you can see that he's, he's holding the transistor below the vacuum tube. Yes. And not looking at it even. I wouldn't touch it. You, you could get diseases from it. That's right. Do they have any case studies where somebody used transistors and their dog died? And <laughs> <laughs> Still not done. Uh, what else do we have? Oh yeah, I think that's somewhere in there. That's the control panel. Yes. Uh, that is from Brad Prophet. That's indeed the control panel. Uh, uh, can or somebody can you? Um, oh, it says IBM. Oh, oh, go. IBM, the, uh, IBM goodness on it. Oh. Ooh, ooh, it's sticky. Okay, so this one definitely gets quarantined. And we'll get to get clean before we can. No, it looks very nice. Like it's an, switches. wow. Yeah. yeah, these are the same switches. I, ooh, 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 ooh. There's documentation. This, one, this one's broken. You, there would be an overlay here. And you could, you, you could use it for s several instruments and you put just, yeah, I can see something can fl uh, slide in front of it. And your lights would have a different meaning depending on which instrument you hook it up to. It's, it's just, a, just a logic analyzer, I guess. Connector A, connector B. This, is that the percent tag? It doesn't look like it. So I have to, I have to figure out what this is. Oh, I'll study the schematics. All right. Next, I think this is another donation from Peter House. Yeah, thank you. You have just incredible support from Patreons. Oh! Who wants it? Thank you for the ducky, Peter. This is great. Who wants an extra ducky for Mark, you? But you need that for debugging. Yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> debugging. Rubber duck debugging. Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. It's, it's a GPID. I remember. It's a guy that was doing instrumentation and it's a serial to GPIB thingy. So this has RS-232 on one side and gives you GPIB on the other side. That's useful. So I could have my TI silent drive my HP instruments via the NI box. Oh yeah, yeah, this is, this, actually, this is good because it, it's a pain to interface um, a GPIB on, on modern computers. But, but with that, you just send it just RS-232 characters and so, oh, that's, thank you so much. It will be put to good use. Last box and that one, I know what it is. It's also an eBay thing and it's related to serial equipment. So that would be a good one also to hook it, to hook up to the HPIB. Ah! Got a handle on it. Oh, nice. Nice things. Uh, it's HP, and this is a parts machine. Uh, this is a 4957. Ooh. That was uh, probably the cheapest one on eBay at the time. This is an RS232 tester. Mm -hmm. uh, the third generation of them. This is the. the it has five microprocessor in it from every company. There's I think there is an Intel, a Motorola, a 6502. <laughs> it's just, it's incredible. There's just five micros in it. It's so cute with a little keyboard. The, little. the 51 and the 52, the older ones, they can only do 29, 40 characters. And on this one, they introduced the double resolution and it can do 80 characters, right? So in very small characters. And that mode, which I bought, it specifically for is the only thing that didn't work in my other one, in my good one, well, quote unquote good one. And 
and finally on that third generation the uh, everything is ASICs in it right so they, they condense all the boards uh, which allows them to put actually the on the side here the input on the on the other generation it's another box where you have all the inputs but this one is much you know, more integrated because of the ASICs. So, so this is like a little breakout box patch panel where you can like put jumpers to connect up here. Right, right. You, so it, you oh, can, you and, and you, so it's in and out also. So you can just put it straight into, into the stream and it still goes and you sniff it. And so the default the is with the video generator, which is not documented. And this one's not going to come up. So we're not going to know. Yeah, well, I had hoped that I could do a quick test, but yeah, not going to happen. But not to worry, you will get to play with our new toys in future episodes and get this one working. Actually, both of my units while we were at it, so not a parts unit after all. So thanks to all the viewers and Patreons for the donations, and see you in the next episode.